ஸ்ரீ குருபே நமக்க சொல்றேன் we are going to compare the features of management with the features of art science and profession and we are going to conclude whether management has the feature of art or science or profession let us compare in detail first we are going to compare management with art art has the character of theoretical knowledge there is an existence of theoretical knowledge in art that is its first feature do we have like that in management yes we do have theoretical knowledge in management it is designed by many theorists and professionals who have been there in management who have been experts in management so management matches the first feature of art next art has a personalized application yes any artist who are performing will be analyzed based on their personalized application about on their theoretical knowledge so even in a management a manager all managers will not apply the theory as the same they differ accordingly okay we can see two dancers do not dance of the same style or two singers if you take if you compare the voice of uh, SPB it will not be similar to JS plus, isn't it? So likewise, even in management, every manager who is working in a management, they will be unique in their own way how they apply their theoretical knowledge. Okay, so management matches with art. Next, based on practice and creativity, artist will develop their skill only based on their practice and only based on their creativity. same way even a manager on his experience he will gain more knowledge when compared to the theoretical knowledge so they become more creative once they uh, earn more experience in their field okay so we can conclude management matches all features of art and we can say that management is an art and that is why we have the definition management is the art of getting work done to people next we will compare management with science science has the first feature as systematized body of knowledge so here the science principles are purely based on cause and effect relationship so this cause and effect relationship will not be possible in case of management because we deal with human resource so every time will not be able to have a cause and effect relationship but still we follow some systematized body of knowledge where we have designed our uh, uh, management studies by the practitioners okay they have practiced it and they have given some principles to be followed so we do have this systematized body of knowledge next principles based on observation and experimentation so this observation and experimentation cannot be done for all cases in management because each and every situation even if the situations are same people who are involved in it will be different culturally they will be different region wise they will be different so the same observation on experimentation cannot be successful okay so it differs we cannot say principles are completely based on observation and experimentation so we can say that management is an inexact science okay next universal validity when you take a science equation or when you take any theory in science uh, in science uh, it is universally valid everybody in the globe uh, will uh, accept the fact that the theory stands true under their under all circumstances across the world but here in case of management it differs because people of different countries take things in a different way because of the culture they follow so management cannot be said that it has some universal validity in some part we may have a strong recommendation for some solution in some part we may we may be opposed for the same solution okay so it differs based on the people so that's why we say universal validity is not there for management so overall we can conclude that management is an inexact science okay next we will compare management with profession 
the first feature of profession is well defined body of knowledge whether management has like that yes management has a well defined body of knowledge because we do have some uh, education pattern which is designed for the management students next comes restricted entry whether management studies have entries restricted yes we do have some restrictions for mba for professional courses like uh, ca cma cs like that okay so we agree that feature with the management also next professional association whether do we have professional or no association like pro professionals like a, a lawyer should be a member of bar council and a, a doctor should be a member of the medical council so likewise whether do we have anything for the managers yes we have something called aima for the managers that is all india managers association okay so here the association of this uh, i mean the membership of this association is not compulsory for all managers and they do not enjoy any legal benefits also so that's why we have an association like professionals but still it's not compulsory next comes ethical code of conduct ethical code of conduct is not le levied for the managers because managers are employees of a particular organization and they are supposed to follow the code of conduct designed by that particular organization so we don't have any common code of conduct framed for managers on the whole next comes service motive here we cannot say managers are service motive but still as they are working but still they can have some service motive within their scopes limited okay like for example uh, they may uh, be concerned about their fellow beings who are working with them and um, they can consider from the other sides okay like uh, managers instead of thinking them from manager side they can think from the other side from the employee side whether it will be beneficial for them or whether it will be feasible for them in that way so likewise we can say service motive is also there to certain extent in management so for conclusion we can say that management is developing and reaching to profession okay so this is how we compared management with art science and profession and in nutshell we can say management as an art and management as an inexact science and management is on its way to reach its professionalism okay next we are going to see the levels of management these levels of management is common for all organization because the top level managers will be dealt with they have three levels of managers top level middle level and supervisory or operational level now we'll see each one in detail top level managements the ceo of the company the cfo of a company these people are examples of top level managers what they do what these top level managers actually do is they integrate and coordinate the activities in the organization they are responsible for the function of the organization okay they analyze the business environment the whole business environment will be analyzed by these top level managers because they formulate the overall organizational goals only if they analyze the business environment they will be they will be able to identify their threats their warnings and their strengths and weakness too okay so based on that they will formulate the plan for the overall organization that is planning function is performed by this top level managers for the whole organization and they also arrange for the resources to reach the goal so this is about top level management next is middle level management middle level managers are the department heads they represent their particular departments here they interpret the policies framed by the top level managers okay so they actually formulate the top level managers formulate the plans and those plans are interpreted by these middle level managers and these people will ensure the availability of personnel that is 
they will consider whether they have sufficient workforce to complete the given work and these middle level managers will assign duties to their supervisory level managers to their departmental workforce they will assign duties and they will also motivate managers all levels of managers have to do this work of motivation but still department heads will motivate their members to achieve the common goal and these department heads also should cooperate with other departments because being departmental heads they'll be concentrating to achieve only their department's goal but the actual objective is to achieve the overall goal or the organization's goal so they have to target to achieve the overall goal by cooperating with other departments next is supervisory or operational level management the example for this supervisory or operational level management is the supervisors who work in the organization or the foreman who work in the organization so this designation is the example for supervisory or operational level management so these people are like senior most in their among the employees and they are the least in the hierarchy of managers so what is their work they have to monitor the efforts of all employees they have to interact with the workforce and they have to pass on instructions so their work is every day they will meet the employees unlike top level managers or like uh, or unlike um, middle level managers these supervisory level managers will meet employees on daily basis so they can interact with the workforce and they have to pass on the instructions which is given by their departmental heads and they need to ensure the quality of output because the efficiency of a manager can be checked only with the work or only with the output that is produced okay so they have to ensure the quality of output and as they meet the workforce on a daily basis they have to represent the workers grievances to their superiors and they also should ensure safe and proper working environment for the employees to come and work so these are the works of supervisory or operational level management thank you